Hello fans and welcome to This Day in Baseball where we're going to bring you a full radio broadcast of today's game and before we do that I just want to thank Classic Baseball Radio and there's a link in the notes where you can uh, check out their full channel. They have many, many great radio broadcasts. And while you're listening to today's game, if you want to check out much more about the game and the players, look on the links below, and you're going to see uh, links to player pages, the date the game happened, the year it happened, and the play-by-play. Enjoy the game, and check out the links while you're watching the game, and please don't forget to hit the subscribe button so that every time new content comes out, you're going to get that uh, firsthand. And thank you again for checking out This Day in Baseball, and enjoy the game. For the New York Mets, the leadoff man playing in right field, Jim Hickman. Batting second and playing shortstop, Elio Chacon. Batting in the third position and in center field, Joe Christopher. Batting fourth, playing left field, Frank Thomas. Batting fifth and playing first base, Gil Hodges. Batting in the sixth position, at second base, Charlie Neal. Batting seventh, playing third base, Felix Mantia. And batting in the eighth position and doing the catching, Harry Jeter. And on the mound for the New York Mets in his first appearance against the Los Angeles Dodgers, Bob Miller, he has a record of no wins and two losses. For the Los Angeles Dodgers, the leadoff man will be Maury Wills playing at shortstop. Batting second playing at third base, Jim Gilliam. Batting in the third position in center field, Willie Davis. Batting fourth. In left field, Tommy Davis. Batting fifth, playing first base, Ron Fairley. And batting in the sixth position, in right field, Frank Howard. The catcher will be John Roseboro. He'll be batting seventh. And batting in the eighth position, playing at second base, Larry Burright. And on the mound, looking for his first victory right here in Dodger Stadium. He has a record of three wins and three losses. Johnny Badres, a left-handed pitcher. Well, that's the starting lineup. And it's a beautiful night here in Los Angeles for baseball. The temperature about 60 degrees, not quite as warm as last night. And again, once again, a good crowd on hand for this second meeting between these two clubs. There will be another night game tomorrow night. Game time will be 10.55 New York time. And then the New York Mets will move on to San Francisco for a day game. A single game starting at 1 o'clock San Francisco time. That will be 4 o'clock New York time. Then a big double header, which will start at 12 o'clock San Francisco time or 3 o'clock New York time and against the San Francisco Giants. And now we're all set to go and to tell you all about it, here is Lindsey Nelson. Thanks very much, Ralph China. Right-hand batter Jim Hickman standing in there now as left-handed Johnny Padres. Winds and fires and the pitch is low for ball one. Hickman back in the lineup tonight for the New York Mets and manager Casey Stengel has him playing in right field and he has moved Joe Christopher into center field tonight. Still trying to get straightened out with his outfield alignment. Here's a pitch that dips in there low for a ball. John Padres with a record of three victories and three losses thus far this season. Padres is 30 years old from Witherby, New York. Here's the 2-0 pitch, and it's right down to Pike for a call. Strike one. Padres was the top percentage pitcher in the National League last year. He won 18 and lost five, had a percentage of 783. There's a 2 1 pitch, a letter pitch comes in high, and it's ball three. It's three and one now. Jim Hickman looks down to Sally Hemus, the coach at third, Cookie Lava Jutter, coaching around at first tonight, as usual, for the New York Mets. Here's the 3 1 pitch inside, ball four, and Hickman has drawn a walk to open up the ball game. So the New York Mets have a base runner. Hickman goes to first, and here comes the shortstop, Elio Chacon. Chacon is a right-hand batter. Elio Chacon. Then Marv Thornberry has rejoined the New York Mets. He is in uniform here tonight and will be available uh, if needed. Dr. John Bennett of Johns Hopkins says the injured knee is not chronic. He went to Baltimore to have it examined. Here's a throw over to first, and Hickman gets back safely. Ron Fairley, the first baseman over there for the Los Angeles Dodgers. Right now in second place in the National League standings. This morning they were a game and a half out. Tonight they're two games out because San Francisco won. Another throw over to first, but Hickman gets back safely. 
this afternoon. San Francisco defeated the Philadelphia Phillies by a score of 7 to 4. Padres with a pitch in there for a call strike to Elio Chacon. Willard Hunter, the young pitcher, purchased by the New York Mets from the Dodgers. Uh, with the Omaha team at present. He's expected to be in uniform tomorrow night. Here's a pitch in there for a call strike two to Elio Chacon. Defensively, the Los Angeles Dodgers have Ron Fairley at first base, Larry Burright at second, Murray Wills is the shortstop, and Jim Gilliam is at third. Tommy Davison left, Willie Davison center, Frank Howard in right. Here's a pitch missing outside for a ball. It's one and two now to Chacon. And Joe Christopher is in the on-deck circle, batting number three in the batting order for manager Casey Singles, New York Mets. The opening game of the series last night, of course, a real thriller here at Dodger Stadium as the Dodgers finally pulled it out in the eighth inning, winning 3-1. to Time call. Time call as Chacon stepped back out of the batter's box and umpire Shag Crawford behind the plate leaped around in front of John Roseburg to stop the pitch. One ball and two strikes to Chacon. Here's the swing and a miss. Strike him out. So Padres has walked one and struck out one now as Joe Christopher comes up, right-hand batter. Christopher playing center field tonight for the New York Mets. Facing the left-hand pitcher, Johnny Padres. Here's the stretch and the pitch. Low for ball one. Padres is trying for his first Dodger Stadium victory tonight. He has an 0-3 record at home and a 3-0 record on the road this season. His last appearance was on May 18th here at Dodger Stadium against the St. Louis Cardinals, and he lost that one 8-3. Here's the pitch outside for a ball. 2-0 the count now to Christopher. Padres was removed in the first inning of that ball game uh, when he was injured by a uh, hit off Boyer's bat. So he has not worked since uh, May 18th. His victories have been uh, at Milwaukee, Houston, and St. Louis. Here's a lob throw over to first, and Hickman gets back safely. Two balls and no strikes to count to Joe Christopher at the plate with Frank Thomas now on deck. Padres pitch, swung on, and has a fly ball to center field. Willie Davis stands right there. Now comes in about two steps, and he makes the catch. Hickman, halfway on the fly ball to center, returns to the bag at first. Two away, runner at first, and Frank Thomas coming up. Frank Thomas was robbed last night of a home run when Tommy Davis leaned over across the barrier into the seats right at the foul pole, 330 feet down the left field line. Now the Dodgers put on the defensive shift, but second baseman Larry Burrard, who had been brought all the way over to the shortstop side of the bag, now has been waved back over about two steps to the right of second base. Here's a pitch to Thomas. It's in there for a call strike. Shortstop Murray Wills in the hole and on the edge of the outfield grass. Third baseman Jim Gilliam about two steps from the line and deep at third. Tommy Davis, deep and over near the line in left field. Willie Davis shaded way over toward left in center. Pitch is low and away for a ball. It's 1-1. That leaves, of course, as far as the infield is concerned, a big gap between first baseman Ron Fairley, who is trying to hold Hickman on at first and coming off with each pitch, and Larry Burright, who is very near the bag at second. Here's the pitch to Thomas. Swing and a miss. It's 1-2. and two. Thomas was saying before the ball game that if there had been fans in the seats last night where Tommy Davis reached over, it would have been a home run because, of course, the fans would have been scrambling for the baseball as well as Thomas, as well as uh, Tommy Davis. One and two, the count with two men out. Let up pitch, driven into the glove of Gilliam, drops it, picks it up, throws on to first base in time to get Frank Thomas. A line shot into the glove of Jim Gilliam, popped right out. He picked it up. And fired on the first in time to get Frank Thomas. So he is out. Gilliam to Ron Fairley. 
And in the top half of the first inning, the New York Mets are out with no runs, on no hits, no errors, and one man left. And at the end of one half inning of play at Dodger Stadium in Los Angeles, California, the score is the New York Mets nothing and the Los Angeles Dodgers coming up nothing. We're going now to the bottom half of the first inning and the Los Angeles Dodgers will send up Maury Wills, Jim Gilliam, and Willie Davis. On the mound tonight for the New York Mets, right-hander Bob Miller. He has won none and lost two thus far this season. Miller is making his fourth start and his eighth appearance of the year. He started against the Braves last Sunday and worked six innings, giving up five runs on eight hits in a game that was eventually won by the Mets, seven to six. Miller was not involved in the final decision. Here is the first pitch in Demari Wills. It goes high for ball one. Wills is a switch hitter, batting left, of course, against the right-hander, Bob Miller. He leads the National League in stolen bases. He can fly. The pitch is low. It's ball two. Defensively at third base, Felix Mantia in on the edge of the infield grass against the speed of Murray Wills. Pitch goes high for a ball, 3-0. and Gil Haji is playing first base tonight for the New York Nets. Charlie Neal at second. Elio Chacon at short. Mantia at third. Frank Thomas in left. Joe Christopher in center. Jim Hickman in right. Pitch is in there for a call strike. Three and one. Harry Cheedy is catching tonight for the Mets. Maury Wills backs out of the batter's box for a moment. Now comes back in. Wills kicked around the minor leagues for nine years before the Dodgers finally brought him up. Here's the pitch outside ball four, and Maury Wills has drawn a walk. So the Dodgers pitcher Johnny Padres walked Jim Hickman to open the ball game, and Bob Miller of the Mets has returned the compliment by walking the Dodgers leadoff man Maury Wills in the bottom half of the first inning. That brings up another switch hitter, Jim Gilliam, batting left-handed against right-hander Bob uh, Bob Miller. last eight times at the plate. Gilliam has five hits and three walks. Pitch is inside for a ball. The crowd, of course, starts the cry of go, go, with Maury Wills on first. He leads the National League in stolen bases with 19. Has been thrown out only once this season. Miller throws over to first. He gets back safely. They try to keep a short halter on him, if at all possible, at first base. Dodgers are the running his team in baseball. Pitches outside for ball. Now Harry Cheedy walks out to have a word with Bob Miller. As Maury Wills is standing on the bag at first, count of two balls and no strikes to Jim Gilliam. Maury Wills was brought up to the Dodgers in 1959 to help spark them to the pennant. Then in 1960, he stole 50 bases, the most in a National League season since Max Carey stole 51 back in 1923. Here's a throw over to first. That gets Murray Wills diving back in head first, but he's safe. Wills got his batting average up to 282 last season. Many call him the outstanding shortstop in the National League. Another throw to first, and again, he dives back in. Gil Hodges getting the tag on him in a hurry that time. The crowd is buzzing, of course. Two and zero. Oh, the count to Jim Gilliam at the plate. Another throw over to first. Again, Murray Wills is back safely. Willie Davis is in the on deck circle for the Dodgers. Here's the pitch. It's high and away for ball three. It's three and zero. Oh to Jim Gilliam. These Dodgers lead the majors in stolen bases with 46 stolen bases in 60 attempts in 41 games. They've stolen 46 bases in 41 games. Pitch is in there for a call strike. Three and one now to Jim Gilliam. Dodgers, of course, have been a running team for some time. They have led the National League in stolen bases in each of the past four years. He's running. The pitch is high. The throw through to second base to Chacon. And he's out at second base. 
Corey Wells thrown out at second base as Harry Cheney fired it on. It was a strike to Gilliam at the plate. So for the second time this season, Corey Wells has been thrown out stealing. He had stolen 18 consecutive bases until this moment when Harry Cheney threw him out and Elio Chacon, the shortstop, put the tag on him. One man out in the count of three and two now to Gilliam. Nobody on base for the Dodgers. Here's the pitch. Ground ball to the right side. Charlie Neal on a big Sunday hop. Fires it on over to Gil Hodges at first in time. So Gilliam is grounded out. Neal to Hodges. The right side of the infield of the Mets, of course. Members of the Dodger Alumni Association. Hodges and Neal. And here is Willie Davis coming up. Left-hand batting speedster. without the windup and the pitch is in there for a call strike. Willie Davis has 10 hits and 20 times at bat in the last five games. He has good speed. He's stolen six bases in six attempts this season. That's a call strike two to Willie Davis. Willie Davis, uh, Leads the Dodgers at bat. He has a batting average of 339. Pitch is low for ball. It's one and two. No rookie in recent years has come to the major leagues more widely heralded than uh, Willie Davis. Not a great deal that he cannot do. Rocked him back, and it's 2-2. A moment ago, Ken McKenzie was up and throwing in the bullpen for the New York Mets, but now, uh, since Maury Wills has been thrown out, he has uh, sat down. Here's a swing and a foul ball off the end of the bat of Willie Davis. Harry Cheedy retrieves the ball and gives it to Shag Crawford to look over. Two balls, two strikes to count to Willie Davis with two men out and nobody on base. Nothing, nothing. The Dodgers and the New York Mets meeting here in the bottom half of the first inning at fabulous Dodger Stadium in Los Angeles, California. Pitch is high and away. The count is out three and two now. The scoreboard is located above the right field bleacher area here at Dodger Stadium. And there is a message board over the left field beach area where all sorts of messages are posted. There's a swing and a drive down the right field line. It's a foul ball, full foul. Played off the low wall by right fielder Jim Hickman. Fires it back in. So the count holds it three and two to Willie Davis as he returns now. He was all the way down to first base already. He gets out of that batter's box in a hurry. He's tall. He has a long stride. In his freshman year as a Dodger, Willie Davis was the only member of the club to hit a home run in each of the eight National League parks. Pitch is high for ball four. He walked him. So Willie Davis goes down to first. That is the second walk given up by Bob Miller. And with two men out, cleanup batter Tommy Davis is coming up. Tommy Davis has a batting average of 310. And he leads the Dodgers in home runs with 10. He is Brooklyn born. He's been used all over this ball club. He's running at second base, and here he is. The fly ball out in the right that is caught by Hickman on a sliding catch, and he is out. With Willie Davis running out down the second on the pitch. Tommy Davis sliced it out on the right, and Jim Hickman coming on fast made a sliding one-hand stab for the out. Willie Davis already had turned second and was on his way to third with two men out. 
when Jim Hickman, who was moved over from center to right field tonight by manager Casey Stengel, came in sliding and made a one-hand step, taking it off the top of the grass for the out. And so, in the bottom half of the first inning, the Los Angeles Dodgers are out with no runs, on no hits, no errors, and one man left. And at the end of one full inning of play, at Dodger Stadium in Los Angeles, California, the score is the New York Mets nothing, and the Los Angeles Dodgers nothing. Chicago and Cleveland not scheduled. Now here we go into the second inning, and here again is Lindsay. And Gil Hodges is at the plate. Padres winds and fires outside for ball one. Gil Hodges getting a hand here at Dodger Stadium. One of the most popular of all the Dodgers of all time. Right-hand batter Gil Hodges. Batting number five in the batting order for the Mets. Again, left-handed Padres winds and fires a swing and a miss for strike one. It's 1-1. One, one. Gil Hodges has a season's batting average of 298, and he has five home runs this season. Pitch by Padres, swung on as a ground ball up the middle. At shortstop, Maury Wills has it, fires on to first base in time. Maury Wills ranging way over in a hurry behind the bag on the rim of the outfield grass and firing it on to Ron Fairley at first in time to get Gil Hodges. So there's one away, nobody on, and Charlie Neal is coming up. Charlie Neal, a former Dodger, gets a hand. He and Maury Wills, who provided the double play combination for the Los Angeles Dodgers for several seasons, were having quite a barbering section before the ball game. Padres into the windup, kicks and fires in there for a call strike one to Charlie Neal. right field for a base hit. Up with it is Frank Howard firing it back in and turning and holding it first. He's Charlie Neal with a line single to right. The New York Mets with their first hit of the night off John Padres. That is the first hit of the ball game. With one away, it brings up third baseman Felix Mantilla. Padres now into the stretch. As Neal leads it first, pitch is low for ball one. John Padres needs nine strikeouts to reach 1,000 for his National League career, and he needs five more innings. Well, actually, now he only needs four more to reach 1,500. Pitch is in there for a call strike to Charlie Neal. Padres is the only regular National League starter with a lifetime 500 percentage or better record against every opposing National League team. This, of course, is the first time ever that he has opposed the New York Mets. Here's a 1-1 pitch to Neal. It is outside. And Murray Wills moving up in a hurry at second base thinking that perhaps something might be going. Charlie Neal is on at first base. Felix Mantilla at the plate with a count of two balls and one strike. Neal takes his lead. Padres throws over there. Charlie Neal gets back safely. Felix Mantilla relaxing at the plate. Now, turns and digs in with a count of two balls and one strike. He's running. Here's a ground ball to third. It's taken by Gilliam. He fires on to second. And he is out there as Neal took Larry Burright out of the play. And Tricky Lamagetta is now out to contest this one. And manager Casey Single is coming out also. As Burright came across the bag and Neal was sliding in. Paul eluded him, but uh, the ruling was that he was out. There was no relay to first. And Casey Single is out there now. Harvey, the umpire. And Casey is still there as Cookie Lava Jetta. Come on back over to first. It is going as a forced play, of course. The ball was dropped by Burright as he came off inside. 
But Harvey's ruling was that uh, the force had been completed and he dropped it getting set for the peg on to first, which never came off, of course. So Mantilla has become the base runner after having forced Charlie Neal at second to play going from Gilliam to Burright. Two away, runner at first, and Harry Cheedy, a right-hand batter, is at the plate. Padre's pitch is in there for a call, strike one. No score, nothing, nothing. Top half of the second inning. As a let-up pitch and a ground ball up the middle, he's going through for a base hit. Mantia turns in second, he's digging for third. Willie Davis with the throw. It is high and pulled out by Jim Gilliam. Had to leave his feet. And moving down to second on the throw to third is Harry Cheedy. So we have runners now. The New York Mets have runners at second and third. And pitcher Bob Miller do up here. And he is coming out of the dugout with two men out. It was a ground single up the middle for Harry Cheedy, and taking the turn at second and heading on for third was Mantillo. Willie Davis up with the ball in a hurry and center, fired on over to third, way high, and Jim Gilliam had to reach high and pull it down. And on the throw to third, Harry Cheedy moved on to second. Bob Miller, right-hand batter up there now. Two hits for the New York Mets in this inning. Padres with the pitch. Here's a ground ball to third base. Gilliam has it on a high hop, straightens up and fires on the barely in time to get Bob Miller. And the side is retired. So in the top half of the second inning, the New York Mets got no runs on two hits, no errors, and two men left. And at the end of one and one-half innings of play, in Los Angeles, California, the score is the New York Mets nothing and the Los Angeles Dodgers nothing. This is Lindsey Nelson with Bob Murphy and Ralph Kiner at Dodger Stadium in Los Angeles, California, where the Dodgers will be coming up in the bottom half of the second with Ron Fairley, Frank Howard, and John Roseborough. Here are our final scores in the American League. The Los Angeles Angels have defeated the Washington Senators by a score of 7-4. to four. Ryan Duran, the winning pitcher, and Daniels, the loser. And the Detroit Tigers have defeated the Baltimore Orioles 5-4. to four. Ron Nishwitz is the winner, and Hoyt Wilhelm is the loser. Ron Fairley, left-hand batter, up for the first time. A ground ball to shortstop, taken by Elio Chacon. He fires on to Gil Hodges, and Fairley is grounded out. Short to first, going for the first ball pitch. Here is big Frank Howard, six feet, seven inches tall, 250-pounder. Former All-American basketball star at Ohio State. A baseball star as well. Howard is hitting 262 this season. He has two home runs, and he's batted in 11 runs. Pitch is low for a ball. Howard was inserted into the lineup last night when Wally Moon pulled up a little lame just before game time, and he went to manager Walter Austin and told him he couldn't give him 100%, and so manager Austin pulled Moon out and inserted Howard in the lineup, and he's playing Howard again tonight. That pitch is outside for ball two. So Howard turns and looks down to coach Leo DeRocher at third. Greg Malevi is coaching at first base for the Los Angeles Dodgers. Bob Miller, no wind-up. The pitch in there for a call, strike one. Catcher John Roseborough is now on deck for the Dodgers. John Roseborough is up for the Dodgers. Pitch goes high. The Los Angeles Dodgers leading here by a score of one to nothing. Miller's 
pitch again is high, and it's ball two. Dodgers have won their last three games, and they have won 11 of their last 15. The longest Dodger winning streak this season is four. They've had that three times. As a pitch in there for a call strike. The Dodgers took two from the league-leading San Francisco Giants. They swept the two-game series, and they took the opener from the Mets last night by a score of 3-1. to one. Mets got a fine pitching performance from Roger Craig last night. Pitch is high for a ball. 3-1. and one. Manager Alvin Dark of the Giants explained the two losses that uh, they took here by saying that they happened to get the Dodgers when they're red hot. Here's a swing and a foul ball. It's curving over and into the stands back a third and out of play. Three balls and two strikes now to John Roseborough at the plate. And the New York Mets have certainly drawn a couple of frontline hurlers here so far. Don Drysdale, the pitcher last night, and Johnny Padres, the pitcher tonight for the Los Angeles Dodgers. Bob Miller on the mound right now. Started for the New York Mets. Here's a swing and a ground ball. Charlie Neal at second up with it. Fires on to first base in time. Roseborough grounding out from Charlie Neal to Gil Hodges. Second to first. Two away. Nobody on. Second baseman Larry Burright is coming up. Larry Burright has a season's batting average of 348. Dodger players call him Possum. The rookie second baseman has moved in and taken over at that position. Jim Gilliam started the season at second base. For the Dodgers. Here's a curveball in there for a call strike one to Burright. The fact that the Dodgers had great confidence in Burright enabled the New York Mets to get Charlie Neal from them. Swing and a miss. It's strike two. Spring training in Florida, the Dodgers had Leo DeRocher working with Burright uh, at second base a great deal. Here's a swing and a ground ball to short. Chacon scoops it up. Fires to Hodges at first in time. A hard hit ground ball scooped up by Chacon, and he fires on to Hodges in time to get Burright. And the Los Angeles Dodgers run the bottom half of the second inning with one run on one hit. The homer by Frank Howard. No errors and nobody left. So at the end of two full innings of play, the score is the Los Angeles Dodgers won and the New York Mets nothing. Bob Murphy. Thank you very much, Lindsay. Jim Hickman takes a look at the first delivery thrown by Johnny Padres. One ball, no strikes. Now Johnny Padres into his windup. Down comes his pitch. A slow breaking ball. Hickman went after it. One ball, one strike. New York baseball fans will get a kick, I'm sure, out of seeing Sandy Koufax in action again when the Dodgers come back into New York. Sandy averaging over nine strikeouts a game for his career. Inside and low, ball two, two and one. Sandy says he prefers victories to strikeouts any time, but the two have been blending together for him now, and he won 18 games last year. Two and one on Jim Hickman. A high fly ball hits a short right field and toward the line. Scooting out is Larry Burratt, the second baseman. He takes it for the out and shallow right. One away, nobody on. That'll bring up Elio Chacon. Elio hitting a 244. The Dodger pitching the last three games has been at its very best of the season. The last three games, the Dodger pitching staff has given up just three runs. One run in each of the three games. Johnny Padres sighting in. Down comes the pitch to Chacon. A fastball over. Strike one call. Beautiful night again for the ball game. Very comfortable. Breeze absolutely no factor in the game at all. A line drive hit foul down the right field line. No play. Ilio seemed to kind of swing late and almost take that ball right off his hip. Now a two-strike count on Elio Chacon. 
Dodgers lead one to nothing. We're in the top of the third inning. Ground ball hits slowly down to third. In comes Gilliam. He fumbles the ball. There will be no play. And Elio is a base runner. It's an error charged against third baseman Jim Gilliam. So the New York Mets have a man on, and coming on to hit will be Joe Christopher. Joe single to center, driving in Richie Ashburn with the only run scored by the New York Mets in the game last night. Mets really battled the Dodgers. Roger Craig pitched a fine game in hooking up against Don Drysdale. Dodgers won the game with two in the eighth inning. Now Johnny Padre is up in pitching position. Delivers, the runner goes, a pop-up to short right field, hurrying back for it is the first baseman. Burr right yells him off and makes the grab near the line. Ron Fairley was having trouble getting back to it, and so Larry Burr right came in behind him and caught the pop-up near the first baseline. Ball hit off the fist on the hit and run play by Joe Christopher. Now there are two away, and coming up will be Frank Thomas. Frank hit a hard line drive down to third that popped out of Gilliam's glove. But the ball was stung, and Gilliam had time to pick it up and throw across the diamond to get Thomas his first time up. Now Johnny Padres makes the one-second stop. Delivers a line drive, hit foul. Change up curve. Thomas jumped right on it, but he was out in front and sent it screaming down the left field line into the seats. Well, it's all over tonight in St. Louis. The Pittsburgh Pirates, behind the pitching of Al McBean, beat the St. Louis Cardinals 5-2. to two. Lefty Ray Sadecki, the losing pitcher. Drive it high and deep to left field. This one is way back. It's going, and there it goes, the home run. number 12 for Frank Thomas to put the Mets down in front 2-1. to one. Frank grabbing the hand of Sally Hemus as he rounds third and crosses home plate. That ball was really hit a climbing line drive easily clearing the barrier right at the 370 foot mark and sailing up into the stand. That's the fourth home run that Frank has hit on this road trip. He's now at 12 for the year. He's only one behind Willie Mays and Orlando Zepeda. And he can extends his consecutive game batting streak. Gil Hodges up. Only one behind, Willie Mays and Orlando Cepeda. And he can extends his consecutive game batting streak. Gil Hodges up, and it's inside and a high ball one. So Frank Thomas, who has been hitting a ton on this road trip, belts one off Johnny Padres. And if you check back over the home runs hit by Frank Thomas, they have been hit against the best pitchers in the National League. Swing and a miss and a high hard one. One ball, one strike. He had three home runs in the weekend series in Milwaukee. Was robbed of a home run by Tommy Davis last night and comes back with a two-run homer here tonight. And the Mets are out in front, two to one. Next pitch to Gill. Slow curve that breaks over the inside corner for a strike. Frank Thomas now, in addition to having 12 home runs, owns 29, runs batted in. A drive in the air to right center field, hurrying for it, Davis. He'll have to play it on the hop. A long single to right center. Hodges trying for second. Here's the throw to the side. He is out at second base. Willie Davis firing in a one-bound strike. Demore Wills and Gill is out on a close play at second. I believe Gill thought that the throw was going to be cut off by Larry Burright, who had gone into center field. But Burright was yelled off by Maury Wills and let the ball go through, which he did, and Gill is out on a close play. He'll give Hodges a single to right center. He's thrown out from Willie Davis to Maury Wills. In the third inning, two runs, two hits, one error, none left on. And now at the end of two and a half, the score, the Mets two and the Dodgers one. Last 
half of the third inning. Johnny Padres coming out to lead off the Los Angeles Dodgers against blonde Bob Miller. Bob delivers just off the outside corner. It's ball one. Bob had some troubles in spring training and in the very early part of the season, and so he switched to the no windup type pitching. Pitch is over for a call strike. One ball and one strike. Sally Hemus detected that in his windup, in his motion, Bob was hesitating with his knee, which deprived him of some leverage. Ball two outside and high. Miller says he doesn't intend to stay with the no windup type delivery. He expects to go back to the windup as soon as he has. He's convinced in his own mind he's corrected the flaw. Ball three, three and one now as he goes behind on the opposing pitcher, Johnny Padres. The Chicago Cubs got a run on the top of the ninth inning to beat Milwaukee tonight at County Stadium, four to three. Bob Buell winning his third and Bob Henley the losing pitcher. Strike two called, a full count, three and two. So everything is over now in the major leagues with the exception of the game being played at Houston and the game right here. Three and two pitch. Ground ball hits slowly towards short. Elio Chacon will have to put something on it. He does in time and Padres is out. Ball hit very slow towards short. So Elio Chacon throws him out with a good arm. One down and nobody up. That'll bring up Maury Wills. Wills. Short start. Maury drew a walk in the first inning and then was caught stealing. He had stolen successfully 18 straight times when Harry Cheedy pegged to Elio Chacon to get him. Miller's pitch to him, a bounding ball hit off to the right, no play, foul ball. Bob Miller, in talking about Maury Wills before the game, ventured the opinion that he probably had thrown over to first base trying to get Maury Wills about 50 or 60 times in his career and managed to get him only once. Swing and a miss. Then he came back with a sound philosophy. The best thing to do is not let him get on first base. Mantilla in close at third against Maury Wills batting left-handed. One out, nobody on. Here's the pitch by Miller. Stroked in the air to left field, Frank Thomas drifting back a few strides, makes the catch for the out. Thomas was playing a very shallow left field against Wills hitting left-handed, and had to amble back a few strides for it. Jim. Now there are two away, nobody on, and Jim Gilliam comes up to hit. The Mets leading the Dodgers, 2-1, to one, we're in the last half of the third. Miller has a lifetime mark of four wins and four losses against the Dodgers. Fastball high to Gilliam, one ball and no strikes. Gilliam hitting at 280 was thrown out by Charlie Neal his first time up. Foul pop up, drifting back toward the home dugout. It'll be in the crowd out of play. Very attractive, freckle-faced girl with a world of talent who never misses a game here at Dodger Stadium when the Dodgers are playing at home. Occupying her usual seat behind the dugout, Doris Day. Miller delivers, and Gilliam lays off of it. It's inside at the letters. Two and two. G.D. thought the pitch might have been in there, and he takes his time before returning the ball to Bob Miller. Pitch to Gilliam, a grounder, bounced to short. Big hop, snagged by Elio Ciccone, strides and throws, and the side is out. Strong inning for Bob Miller. No runs, no hits, no errors, none left on. And now at the end of three, the score here at Dodger Stadium is the New York Mets two and the Los Angeles Dodgers one. Bobby Thompson and Ralph Branca have already given their acceptance to appear in the ball game. Charlie Neal will be leading off at the top of the fourth inning. Charlie 
Barry single to right field. His first time up. Johnny Padre is out of the windup. The pitch is swung and missed strike one. Neil really gave that one a ripple. Charlie hitting a 289. Unless you hit the ball right down the line in this ballpark, it takes a good wallop to get a home run. And there haven't been too many hit this year. A line drive towards second caught by Larry Burrat, the second baseman. Ball hit sharply, but right at Larry Burrat. That'll bring up Felix Mantilla. Felix dropping below the 300 mark for the first time in a long time. It's now hitting at 294. The windup pitched by Padres, and it's inside ball one. Swing and a miss on a letter high fastball. One ball, one strike to Felix Mantilla. New York out in front, two to one on a two run homer by Frank Thomas. Behind the plate, back comes Johnny Roseboro. He flips the mask to the side. He's under it. Makes the grab, and there are two away. Mantilla fouls out to Roseboro, and that'll bring up Harry Cheedy. Harry single to center field his first time up. Harry hitting at 375 on 6 4 16. The last game Johnny Padres ever pitched in the polo grounds, he pitched a shutout. Strike one call that caught the inside corner to Harry Cheedy. Outfield deep and around toward left. Outside and low. One and one on Harry Cheedy. Harry is standing well back from the plate. Nine-year veteran who first came up with the Chicago Cubs. ball. He just got a piece of that one. A big curve thrown by Padres. The Dodgers, with a world of talent, feel that their real depth is in their pitching staff. Well, they have two left-handers that won 18 games last year, and Johnny Padres and Sandy Koufax. With Don Drysdale and Stan Williams as their other two right-handers and their big four. Pitching one and two. Swing, and a miss. He struck him out. Johnny Padres fanning Harry Chidi. For Padres, his second strike out of the game. No runs, no hits, no errors, none left on. And now at the end of three and a half innings, the score of the Mets two and the Dodgers one. Willie Davis will be out to face Bob Miller in the last half of the fourth inning with the Mets in front two to one. Al Jackson will be bidding for his third win of the year in the windup of this three-game series tomorrow night. Tomorrow night's game from Los Angeles will be both broadcast and telecast. Be on the air at 10.55 New York time. Mets will be hitting against rookie Joe Moeller in the game tomorrow night. Moeller has won two while losing four. He put together a fantastic season in the minor leagues last year as a first-year rookie in the minors. Now Willie Davis up. Willie hitting at 339. How he can fly. Willie left-hand batter waiting. Ground ball hit down to Gil Hodges. Gil has it, runs to the bag, makes the play himself, one away. And Bob Miller gets Willie Davis on one pitch. One out and nobody on. That'll bring up Tommy Davis. One thing that Casey Stengel is certainly greatly encouraged about is the fact that his pitching has certainly come around for him. The Mets lost their first nine of the year. It was the pitching that was creating a lot of problems. But since then, the pitching has straightened out. And the Mets have been getting some outstanding pitching. Bounding ball slowly hit by Tommy Davis. It'll go foul down the third baseline. 
Bob Miller, rounding into form, has greatly helped Casey's pitching problems to get his starters set. And he has Ken McKenzie and Craig Anderson set us the short men in his bullpen, and they have been doing real good work. He bunts the ball, but it will be foul down the third baseline. Tommy Davis, the cleanup hitter, trying to bunt for a base hit. Frank Thomas, batting cleanup for the New York Mets, has used the bunt as the surprise weapon and used it effectively on about three or four occasions this year. The infield astride to left and the outfield deep and around toward left against Tommy Davis. Miller's pitch to him. In the dirt, it bounds away. No damage done, nobody on. Ron Fairley, the first baseman on deck, and then Frank Howard. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. Tommy Davis tried to hold up on his swing, and a beauty of a breaking pitch thrown by Bob Miller really had him fooled, and now he fusses a bit with Shank Crawford, but it's an argument he can't win. Tommy hit the ball hard his first time up tonight. And Jim Hickman made a sliding glove hand grab in right field to rob him of a base hit. That's the first strikeout chalked up by Bob Miller, and the hitter now is Ron Fairley. Pitches over a call strike. Interesting thing that as the New York Mets came into this series, the Dodger bats were at their hottest peak. Not one, but about five of the Dodgers in the midst of a hot streak. And Roger Craig held them in check last night. Outside. One ball, one strike to Ron Fairley. Fairley hitting at 254, but he's had nine hits in his last 14 at bats. Well, there's no wind up delivery. A bounder over the mound towards second. Neil Racing grabs it, gives to Chacon, who throws. Not in time. They almost pulled it off. to the hand for Charlie Neal. Charlie going at full speed, stretched his hand out, made a backhanded step behind second base, flipped the ball with his glove hand to Elio Chacon. Elio whirled and fired on to Gil Hodges, but not in time, but what a play. Chacon and Hodges have been working together on that play. They've tried to pull it off about three times. It's a real eye popper, and one of these days they're going to make it. They've got nothing to lose. Big Frank Howard stepping in. He hit a line drive for a homer his last time up, and the pitch is in there, strike one call. He hit a hard line look drive that sailed into the lower field boxes right down the line, going in at about 315 feet. Inside at the knees. One ball, one strike now on big Frank Howard. Howard hitting a 273, as if three homers knocked 12 runs in. Walter Alston, Pete Reiser, and Leo DeRocher have all been working with Howard to get him to study the strike zone. Bounding ball over the head of Bob Miller, slowly hit a tough chance. Chacon throws. Holds on to the ball. He fakes the throw. It's a base hit for Frank Howard. Infield hit for Frank Howard. Elio Chacon, by the time he got in behind the mound and scooped it up on the run, realized he couldn't get Howard, but he faked the throw, held on to it, and whirled around to see if he had anything going on the lead runner, Ron Fairley. And now the Dodgers have bounced two of them and have two men on. Ron Fairley hit a ground ball up the middle that Neal snagged behind second. And now big Frank Howard with that big swing of his hit a slow bounder that took such a high bounder. It was over Miller's head. Johnny Roseboro stepping in. Left-hand hitter. Roseboro hitting at 266. Now the Dodger fans are starting to stir around. The Mets leading by a score of 2-1. to one. We're in the last of the fourth inning. 
Now Bob Miller wants Harry Cheedy down for a foul out. While they get together, we'll take the opportunity to pause for station identification. At the 810 spot on your radio dial, this is the smoothest sound around, WGY Schenectady. For the Los Angeles Dodgers, they have Ron Fairley on second, Frank Howard on first. There are two away. Batter is John Roseboro. Swing and a miss on a curve. A cheaty bluffs a peg to second base. Roseboro 0 for 1, thrown out by Charlie Neal his first time up tonight. They play him to pull the ball, the outfield shifting over toward right. Larry Burr right, the second baseman, waiting on deck. Bob Miller delivers. Foul ball back toward the upper deck, and this will be out of play. This magnificent stadium... The fans actually can watch the ball game from six different levels. The lowest level is the same level with the dugouts. And you're actually kind of looking up at the game from that lowest level. Like the new stadium out in Flushing, they have magnificent parking space. Bob Miller up in pitching position, delivers to Roseboro in the dirt, blocked by Cheedy. The runners do not go. He blocked it, and it bounded out in front of him. One ball and two strikes on Johnny Roseboro with Ron Fairley on second, Frank Howard on first. New York, two runs on four hits and no errors. The Dodgers, one run, three hits, and one error. himself up just a little bit. Looking in now to get his sign from Cheedy. Here's the pitch on the way. Strike three called, a knee-high fastball. Roseboro knew it, turns and walks away. A big clutch pitch made by Bob Miller, and Roseboro is called out. For Bob Miller, his second strikeout, both coming in the fourth inning. No runs, two hits. No errors, two left on. And now at the end of four, the score... The New York Mets, two, and the Los Angeles Dodgers, one. The song says he's side, west side, all around the town. You'll find tickets to New York Mets games at the Polo Grounds. Now we're going along to the fifth inning. The New York Mets coming up and getting a hand as he comes up is Bob Miller. And coming up to follow the action for you here at Dodger Stadium, Ralph Kainer. Thank you, Bob Murphy. And here's Bob Miller with a fine hand from a fine crowd here in Dodger Stadium. And the first pitch to the right-handed batters outside, ball one. Johnny Padres on the mound for the Los Angeles Dodgers. He's looking for his first victory here in Dodger Stadium. He has a record of three wins and three losses. Left-hander back to the plate, and he misses low for ball two. Two balls and no strikes. Miller was out on a ground ball to Jim Gilliam, his only time up. batting 222. And the next pitch to him, a fastball that's through in the inside corner. Strike one call. Two balls and one strike as Miller leads off in the top of the fifth inning. The score 2-1 to one in favor of the New York Mets. Frank Thomas's home run putting him there. Next pitch to Miller calls strike. To the count now, two balls and two. The on-deck batter is Jim Hickman. He'll be followed by Elio Chacon. Now Johnny Padres back with his pitch. A swing and a miss, strike three. So Miller goes down swinging. Strikeout number three by Johnny Padres. One man out of the batter is Jim Hickman. Jim Hickman. Two strikeouts in a row for Johnny Padres. Padres now with... Three strikeouts in the ball game means only six more strikeouts to reach 1,000 for his major league career. First pitch to Hickman, a curveball. It's inside ball one. Jim walked in the first. He popped up to the second baseman in the third, 0 for 1, batting 265, a right-handed batter playing in right field tonight. 
Audrey's with a change of pace. This line just fouled on the left field line. Ball couldn't have been fouled by more than about six inches. So a hard strike to Jim. The count now, one ball and one strike. Hickman did not play in the opening game of the series against Don Drysdale. Dodgers won that one three to one behind Drysdale's four hit pitching. Curveball, it's low. Ball two. Two balls and one. Drysdale pitched to only 30 batters in that ball game last night, and it was the fastest game played by the Dodgers all year. The 2 1 pitch to Hickman popped up over in foul territory, going by the box seats and out of play. This is a six tier stand. The lower tier right at ground level and up the highest point in the far, far upper part of the sixth tier, a place where they facetiously always say here in Los Angeles, you can see Catalina on a clear day, and I'm sure you could from up there. Of course, they haven't seen Catalina for quite some time around here. The 2-2 pitch to Hickman. He checks his call, strike three. So now, Padres with three strikeouts in a row, number four in the game, and two men down. That will bring up Elio Chacon, who was the first strikeout victim of Johnny Padres in the first inning. He was also safe in an error in the third and scored right ahead of Frank Thomas's home run. Mets lead it 2-1. to one. Dodgers scoring their one run on a home run by Frank Howard. Elio Chacon batting 241, a right-handed batter playing at shortstop. And he takes on the inside corner of the knees, strike one call. Jack Crawford, the home plate umpire, really gets in the act as an umpire. Last night at first base, he was all over the place. And when he calls a pitch now, especially low, he's right on the ground. One strike pitch is high, ball one. Two men out at the top of the fifth inning. Mets lead it by one, two to one. They have two runs on four. It's Dodgers have one on three. Johnny Bodrey's back to the plate with a 1 1 pitch and attempted a bump, but it goes foul. So the count now one ball and two strikes. It's 3 30 down each foul line. 410 to dead center field, left center, right center, 380. But the ball does not carry well in this ballpark. We were talking to Jim Gilliam after last night's game. He says this is not a hitter's park. Audrey's back to Chacon. The ball is fouled away, so the count will stay at one ball and two strikes. ball two strikes as Johnny Padres looks for the sign from his catcher John Roseboro. He has it the swing and the pitch. A let up curveball that just about called a strike. It's ball two. Jack Crawford had the right hand up about halfway. Three deuces on the board. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. As Padres returns to the play, the change of pace popped up in the shallow center field. Coming on quickly now, Willie Davis, he is there, and he makes the catch. And that retires the side in the top of the fifth, three up and three down. The score at the end, the four and one half innings to play. The New York Mets, two. The Los Angeles Dodgers, one. Well, we're moving to the bottom half of the fifth inning in a ball game that is moving right along. The score, two to one in favor of the New York Mets, and coming to bat... The Los Angeles Dodgers. They will send up Larry Burright, their eighth man in the batting order, playing at second base. He'll be followed by the pitcher, Johnny Padres. And then it will be the leadoff man, Maury Wills, against Bob Miller. Miller, so far through four innings of pitching, has given up one run. It was a home run by Frank Howard, his third of the season. He's allowed only three base hits. He struck out two, and he has walked two. Miller looking for his first victory in the 1962 season now. All set to go against Larry Burright. Burright batting 343 off to a fine start in his first major league season. The right-handed batter playing at second. He is all for one today. Grounded out to Elio Chacon at short. 
Miller's first pitch swung on foul down in the dirt strike one. Miller making his fourth start in his eighth appearance of the season. Now the right-hander back to the plate. It's fouled up in the air over on the first base side, but going out of play. So the count, no balls and two strikes. Fine catch by... A box seat holders, he dove high in the air and came down on top of the dugout. The dugout is located, the visiting dugout down the first base side, and is a big one. It's a long one about, oh, we guess about 70 feet long. Then extending from the dugout all around to the home dugout, what they call field box seats. They have the same view in these box seats as they have in both dugouts. Bob Miller now with a count on Burr Wright. No balls and two strikes. And there's a line drive. Chacon to his left, gloves it. He is out. Fine play by Elio Chacon, and he's made several here in this series. That ball was well hit, and Elio had to move quickly to his left and took it going away. One up and one down, and the batter now, Johnny Padre. Johnny grounded out to the shortstop. His only time up. He's batting 200. Padre's a left-handed batter. Bob Miller with his first pitch. An attempt at a bunt. It's fouled back over the top of the catcher. Strike one. Phoenix Mangia at third base playing in short. He's looking for the bunt. Padre's going for the base hit on the bunt drive. At the end of six, Cincinnati three, Houston nothing. That's the only game still going on in Major League play outside of the one right here. One strike pitch to Padre, swung on a missed strike two. Mets two runs on four hits, the Dodgers one on three. Two strike pitch, bunted out in front of home plate. Miller hustles over, picks it up, throws high, but Hodges stays on the back and hauls it down. Out number two. Well, Johnny Broderick's trying to cross everybody up with a two strike bunt. Didn't quite get away with it, although he came close. And the batter now is Maury Will. Maury walked in the first inning, was thrown out on an attempted steal by Harry Cheedy, and he also flied out to left field. So he is 0 for 1. Batting 229. He's a switch hitter batting left-handed against the right-handed pitcher Miller. Mantia moving in right on top of Wills at third base. And the first pitch catches at the knees on the outside corner. Strike one call. Felix Mantia about 65 feet away from Rory Wills playing the third. And the next pitch to Wills inside. Ball one. One ball, one strike. Two outs in the bottom of the fifth to score 2-1 in favor of the New York Mets. 1-1 pitch to Wills. Top down the third base side, bouncing into foul territory and out of play. So the count will go to one ball and two strikes. If there was ever a ball player in Major League history that made himself a good ball player, it's Maury Wills. He originally was a right-handed batter. And to take advantage of his speed, he learned to how to bat from the left-hand side in a matter of about a year. He tries to chop the ball in the dirt when he bats left-handed just to bounce it somewhere, figuring he can beat it out, and he certainly can. He can fly. Although there's quite a bit of speculation about who is the fastest man on the Dodgers squad. One-two pitch to Wills. Curve ball in the dirt, bouncing out in front of Harry Chidi. Ball two. You can get quite a bit of action around here on who you'll bet on. It could be Tommy Davis, Willie Davis, Maury Will. They've got a fast ball club. Two balls and two strikes. As Miller returns to the plate, the pitch is fouled down in the dirt, so the count will stay at two and two. Wills 
was actually given up on by the Los Angeles Dodger management. They gave him the Detroit, but Detroit wouldn't take him. Next pitch, swung on and missed strike three. So Bob Miller picks up his third strikeout to retire the side in the fifth inning. Three up and three down, and the score at the end of five. The New York Mets, two. The Los Angeles Dodgers, one. Moving to the top of the sixth inning, the New York Mets out in front on two runs with four hits. And the Los Angeles Dodgers with one run on three. Now coming up the bat for the New York Mets, Joe Christopher as he leads off here in the top of the sixth. He'll be followed by Frank Thomas and then Gil Hodges. Joe for two. He has flied out to center field and popped up to the second baseman. Batting 143 since coming up from Syracuse. He has two hits and 12 times up. One of the hits driving in the run last night. He takes the first pitch from Johnny Padres at the knees. Call strike one. Padres now has struck out three of his last four men. Now the left-hander with a one-strike pitch to Joe Christopher. A big change of pace. Call strike two. Well, when I first came up in the major leagues and hit against Padres for the first time, they told me he had a great change. I was looking for it. He threw it, and he still fooled me. There's a curveball. It's low. Ball one. One ball, two strikes. Johnny Padres probably has as good a change of pace as anybody in the history of baseball. Great motion with it. The one-two pitch to Christopher is just a little bit too low. Ball two. Two balls and two strikes. Another fine change of pace by Carl Erskine. He had a beauty. Two balls and two strikes. No one out in the top of the sixth inning. As Christopher bounces the next pitch to Gilliam. Gilliam backs up. Takes a long throw. Throws just in time. Junior Gilliam back him up on the play. Had to make a long throw to get the fast Christopher and got him by half a step. So one man out now and Frank Thomas comes in. Thomas's two-run home run gave the New York Mets their lead in the top of the third. Frank over the last 13 games has been red, red hot. He has batted 392. He takes a strike call to the knee. And he has hit safely in all 13 of the ball games. He's been at bat 51 times, picked up 20 hits, driven in 14 runs, and hit four home runs. Big swing and a foul back on the screen, strike two. Thomas batting 331. One for two tonight. Johnny Padres now with a two-strike count to Frank Thomas. A slider that's checked on and fouled away. So the count will stay at 0-2. Frank's home run tonight into the bleachers in dead left field about 399 feet away. There was no doubt about it. It was a line shot. Again, the two-strike pitch. He takes it, calls strike three. So Frank Thomas goes down for strikeout number five by Johnny Padres and out number two. I will bring up Gil Hodges playing for the first time in Dodger Stadium. Gil was retired in a fine play by Maury Wills, and Wills went deep back at second base to throw him out. Then he singled the center field, so he's one for two. Batting 305. Gil got a great ovation when he was introduced in the starting lineup. First pitch to him, just a little bit low, ball one. Zach Crawford just about had that right hand up. Home plate umpire, Shag Crawford. At first base, it's Ed Bargo. Doug Harvey at second. Al Barlick at third. 2-1 game, New York. Top of the sixth inning, two outs. Hodges takes a strike call right through. He was taking all away. One ball, one strike. Mets play the Dodgers in the night game again tomorrow night. Joe Moeller going for the Dodgers. He's the youngest pitcher in the major leagues. Against Al Jackson. There's a hard ground ball to Wills, a two-hopper. He has it. Flips over high to Ron Fairley. He takes it on the bag for out number three. 
Three up and three down for New York to score at the end of five and one half innings of play. The New York Mets, two. The Los Angeles Dodgers, one. Hitting their lead, they lead two to one. Mets two runs on four hits. Dodgers one run on three. And leading off for the Los Angeles Dodgers, Jim Gilliam. Gilliam a switch hitter batting left-handed against Bob Miller. Miller through five innings has given up one run on three hits. The run coming on a home run by Frank Howard. Gilliam 0 for 2. He's batting 278, and the first pitch to him is a ball. and the first pitch to him is a ball. It'll be Jim Gilliam, Willie Davis, and then Tommy Davis in that order here in the sixth inning for the Dodgers. Now Miller back to the plate, a let up the side side, ball two. Two balls and no strikes. Gilliam looking at Leo DeRocher for the sign on the hitter take. Rocher coaching at third base. Greg Malevi is at first. And the next pitch to Gilliam is outside and high, ball three. So now, Miller, three balls and no strikes to the leadoff man here in the bottom half of the sixth inning. Mets lead at 2 1. to the plate with a 3-0 pitch, a call strike, a fastball through by Bell High. Three balls and one strike. Gilliam last night on base all four times he came to bat, had three for three in a walk. He takes outside, ball four. Joe Miller walks his third man, the leadoff man here in the bottom half of the sixth inning, and that will bring up the third man in the batting order, Willie Davis. 336, he's in the Big Ten. Off to a fine start this year. Willie Davis, the left-handed batter. Now Craig Anderson gets up in the bullpen for the Mets. Pitch to Willie Davis is punted out in front of the plate. Miller goes to first base, throws to Hodges there, and he is out. And moving on down in the sacrifice bunt to second base, Jim Gilliam. If you're scoring, it went one to three. No time at bat. And the batter coming on now is Tommy Davis. Tommy was retired in the first inning on a great play by Jim Hickman in right field. He made a diving, sliding catch to rob him of a base hit. Then he was called out on strike. He's batting 306, has 40 runs batted in the 10 home runs for the year. Brooklyn Bourne boy. He is second to Cepeda in the RBI department in the National League. Right-handed batter playing in left field. And now the time run out at second base. It's a 2-1 game in favor of the New York Mets, bottom of the sixth inning. Miller now to the plate with his first pitch. A line drive in the center field coming on fast to Joe Christopher. He is there and he makes the catch. And coming all the way from second base on the play is Jim Gilliam. And they had no trouble at all doubling up at second base. Gilliam had rounded third, was halfway home when the ball was caught. So on the play, you can score at 8-6 to six, and that retires the side. And in the inning for the Los Angeles Dodgers. No runs. No hits, there were no errors, one walk, no one left, and the score at the end of six innings of play. The New York Mets do, the Los Angeles Dodgers. Well, as we move to the top of the seventh inning, here is Bob Murphy. Thank you, Ralph. Say, do you know why Rheingold has more fans in New York than any other beer? Because Rheingold is the dry beer, and that means a big difference in taste. But why don't you enjoy a cold glass of Rheingold right now Join the millions who say, my beer is Rheingold the dry beer. Now Charlie Neal leads off in the seventh inning facing Johnny Padres. Charlie, one for two in the game. Curve in the dirt, one ball and no strikes. Charlie has hit the ball hard both times up tonight. Single to right field and then hit a line drive right at Larry Burr right the second baseman. 
This time, the ball has popped up on the right side of the infield. Scooting into short right is Larry Burright, and he makes the catch in very shallow right field. One away, nobody on. That'll bring up Felix Mantilla. Mantilla has reached on a fielder's choice, fouled out to the catcher. Felix 0 for 2 in the game. Felix hitting at 291. A high fly lifted to center field. Willie Davis comes jogging in, settles under it, and makes the catch for the out. Two up by Johnny Padres, and it brings up Harry Cheedy. Harry has singled to center and been struck out. Two to one ball game. The Mets in front were at the top of the seventh. New York leading on a two run homer by Frank Thomas. The Dodger run came on a line drive homer into the left field lower seats by Frank Howard. Inside at the knees, one ball and no strikes. The only other game going, Cincinnati leading Houston 3 to nothing at the end of six. Strike two call to spot pitch at the knees by Johnny Padres. Padres 3-3 three and three on the year. Has not won a game so far at Dodger Stadium, but has won three without losing on the road. Ground ball slashed to short, handled by Maury Wills. The throw across to Ron Fairley is in time, and the side is out. No runs, no hits, no errors, none left on. Seventh inning stretch time, and at the end of six and a half, the score, the Mets two and the Dodgers one. Well, here it is, the seventh inning out here on the West Coast, and uh, Lindsay, we know what that calls for. Yes, sir, Bob, the good old seventh inning stretch, and do you know what that calls for? Gold Rangel. Rangel extra drive. But really, any nice time calls for Rangel. You know what makes any wonderful day just a little more wonderful? But that figures, because Rheingold is the dry beer. Yes, sir, two little words, extra dry, tell you why Rheingold is the happy choice of millions. Extra dry tells you Rheingold is brewed the long, slow, costlier way that tastes brisk and bright and clean, clear through. Rheingold is beer as beer should taste, and that's why millions say my beer is Rheingold, the dry beer. So why not join them? Enjoy a tall, refreshing glass of Rheingold as we bring you more of the baseball action. Right here, let's pause for station identification. This is WGY Schenectady. the seventh inning, Ron Fairley will lead off against Bob Miller. He will be followed by Frank Howard and then Johnny Roseboro. Walter Alston sending the sign out to the bullpen, which is located in left field. And Larry Sherry starts to warm up. Another fine pitching duel here at Dodger Stadium tonight. Last night, Don Drysdale and Roger Craig hooked up to the mound duel. Dodgers breaking the deadlock in the eighth inning to win it three to one. Right here, we're in the seventh. The Mets in front two to one. Ron Fairley has one hit and two times up. Left hand batter, former Southern Cal star, last year at 322. The pitch by Bob Miller. Ground ball slash past the mound. Neil to his right, knocks it down, no play, and Fairley is on. It'll be an error charge to Charlie Neal. It's a tough chance for Charlie. He had to go quickly off to his right. He tried to set his spikes in front of the ball. It popped out of his glove, and by the time he picked it up, he couldn't make a play. So that puts the pressure on. The Dodgers have the tying run on first. Nobody out. And it brings up Frank Howard. Frank has had two hits of opposite extremes. He had a screaming line drive into the lower seats for a home run. Then his next time up, he bounced one over the pitcher's head for an infield hit. Here's the pitch. Foul ball back into the screen, no play. Now Craig Anderson has been given the sign to get ready once again in the bullpen for the New York Mets. Outfield deep and around toward left. Infield not looking for a bunt. Elio Chacon deep and short and over toward the hole. Broken bat line drive 
caught by Elio Chacon on a jumping grab. That bat broke smack dab at half. Part of the bat flying all the way out to Elio Chacon's feet. Line drive wasn't a hard liner, kind of a soft line drive. Elio isn't very tall, and he had to leave the ground and go high over his head to grab it. One man away. Now Vinegar Ben Mizell starts warming up along with Craig Anderson. Harry Cheedy going out to the mound to talk to Bob Miller, and the hitter stepping in is Johnny Roseboro. Roseboro hitting at 263, has grounded out second to first, taking a call third strike. He's 0 for 2 in the game. Good hitter, they play him around to right. Mantilla, even with the bag, wide of the line at third. Elio Chacon is shaded towards second. Neal not too deep at second. He wants two. Outside in the high, it's ball one. One ball and no strikes. Nets in front, two to one. We're the last of the seventh inning. Down comes the pitch. Outside in the high, it's ball two. Bob Miller behind on Johnny Roseboro now 2 and 0. Out on the Dodger bullpen, Larry Sherry cranking up, indicating that Walter Alston might want to go to a hitter if they get down to the number nine position in the batting order. Roseboro, the catcher, batting seven. Larry Burr right on deck, and then Johnny Padres. In comes the pitch. He swings a line drive to left field, a base hit. Taken on a hop by Frank Thomas. Holding in second, Ron Fairley. And now the Dodgers have runners on first and second. One man out and Larry Burrank coming up. That is the fourth base hit off Bob Miller. Burrank hit a liner that was caught by Elio Chacon his last time up. Elio made a good play on the ball. Burrank up twice tonight without a base hit. He's hitting at 338. Right hand hitter, overly closed stance, swishing that bat around, waiting on Miller. Mets have the infield, hoping for a shot at two. Up to left. Now the pitch. And he hits a high pop fly to short right field. In is Hickman, he's under it, makes the catch. The runners will not try to move up. Now let's see who comes up the hit. Johnny Padres is scheduled. We're in the last of the seventh inning. The Mets in front, two to one. The Dodgers have Ron Fairley on second and Johnny Roseboro on first. Wally Moon is coming out of the dugout. Wally Moon coming out of the dugout. He'll hit for Johnny Padres. Number nine. Wally. So Johnny Padres is out of the game after pitching seven innings. He gave up two runs, allowed just four hits. Walked one and struck out five. Wally Moon batting at 254. Last year, Wally hit 328, including 17 home runs. Wally Moon, the eight-year veteran, real good hitter, left-hand batter, coming up now against Bob Miller. Harry Cheedy going out to discuss with Bob Miller how they'll pitch now to Wally Moon. Wally was originally signed for the St. Louis Cardinals by Freddie Hahn, later traded to the Dodgers. Big moment in the game right here. Runners on first and second, two men down. Now Bob Miller up in pitching position. Delivers. Inside and low. A good scoop by Harry Chitty lunging off to his right. One ball and no strikes on the pinch batter. Leo DeRocher directing the traffic at third. Greg Malevy coaching at first. Right side of the infield back deep. Neal on the rim of the outfield grass and Gill back deep at first. Moon bending from the waist. In comes the pitch. 
low, and the count goes two balls and no strikes. So Bob Miller goes behind 2-0 and on a tough hitter, Wally Moon. They're in the last of the eighth inning in Houston now with Cincinnati leading the Houston Colt 45s 5 to nothing. Joey Jay has the 45s blanked for seven innings. Moon checking with Leo. Now he's set. Down tails that bat around and cocks it. 2-0 delivery. He swings the line drive base hit into left field. Barely around third as the green light. He'll come in to score and the game is tied up. Holly Moon delivering as a pinch hitter with a line single to the opposite field. Scoring Ron Fairley. The game is tied 2-2. Two to two. Duke Snyder has come out of the dugout, and I believe Duke is going to run for Wally Moon. Wally uh, had to stay out of the action last night due to a muscle pull. Now he'll leave the game, and Casey Stengel goes out to the mound. This will be all for Bob Miller. And so Miller, who has pitched a brilliant ball game, Perhaps tiring, and Casey wants a fresh pitcher in action. Greg Anderson will be coming in from the bullpen. Right here, we're all tied up. The New York Mets, two. The Los Angeles Dodgers, two. As Craig Anderson has just come on in relief of Bob Miller, and he's trying to warm up tosses down right now. Incidentally, if you'd like to have a New York Mets yearbook with pictures of all the New York Mets and their activities, Simply address your request to yearbook, Polo Grounds, New York, 39 New York, and enclose 50 cents for each copy of the yearbook that you wish. Now, as Craig Anderson has just about completed his warm-up process once again, here's Bob Murphy. All right, Lindsay, Craig Anderson, relieving now for the first time since the big series over the weekend in Milwaukee. In Milwaukee over the weekend, Craig saved two of the three games won by the New York Mets. He has given up just two runs in his last 15 innings of relief. He's up now against Maury Wells with runners on first and second. Duke Snyder on first, running for Wally Moon. And on second, Johnny Roseboro. Two men away as Craig Anderson takes over. The outfield playing Wills to hit the other way. Here's the pitch by Anderson. A bounding ball hit towards second. Neal grabs the hop, flips to Chacon, and the side is out. So one pitch by Craig Anderson, and the side is out. Give Bob Miller a hand. He pitched an outstanding ball game. Errors are a part of the game, but Miller deserved to be in the dugout without being scored on. The gates were open as the result of an infield error. For the Dodgers in the seventh inning as they tie the game, one run, two hits, one error, and two left on. And now at the end of seven innings, the score, the New York Mets two and the Los Angeles Dodgers two. Right now, we'll be going along to the eighth inning. The Los Angeles Dodgers have a new pitcher in the ball game, and here to tell you all about it and carry along the play-by-play action, Lindsey Nelson. All right, Bob Murphy, it's right hand to Larry Sherry, the big hero of the world championship victory of the Los Angeles Dodgers over the Chicago White Sox in the 1959 World Series. He was the most valuable player in the World Series that year for the Dodgers. He is... One and one this season. He has won one and he's lost one. He has two saves. He has appeared in 17 games, all in relief. Right hand to Larry Sherry here. And Rod Keneal came out swinging a bat and then uh, went back into the dugout. And Craig Anderson has now come around to bat for himself. Rod Keneal came out, swung a bat, uh, and then was called back into the dugout as Craig Anderson is going to lead off batting for himself. Story tied 2 2 as we go to the top half of the eighth inning. Anderson's right hander all the way, bats right. Facing Larry Sherry. Here's the pitch inside for ball one. Official paid attendance here tonight 17,448. For the second game in this current series between the New York Mets and the Los Angeles Dodgers. Here's a pitch, a swing out, a fly ball going deep to center field. Willie Davis off and running, goes way back and hauls it down near the warning track, way out there in left center field. Greg Anderson leaned into that one, 
And only the speed of Willie Davis enabled him to get over there and haul it down in the warning track near the 390 sign. There is one away. Nobody on and Jim Hickman coming up. Through seven innings of play, the New York Mets two runs on four hits and one error. The Los Angeles Dodgers two runs on five hits and one error. Total of 37,333 fans have seen the two games thus far here between the Mets and the Dodgers. There's a pitch on the outside corner for a call strike one to Jim Hickman. He walked. Otherwise, it's gone 0 for 2 tonight. Pass fastball in there for a call strike. 0 and 2 to count to Hickman. Swing and a miss, strike three. Struck him out. That is the first strike I credited to. Larry Sherry, Padre struck out five. And Elio Chacon is coming up for the New York Mets. Struck out, was on on an error, and scored a run, and flied out to center field. Chacon was on base when Frank Thomas hit his home run in the top half of the third inning. That was homer number 12 for Frank Thomas this season. As the pitch low and away, bounces out of the big glove of John Roseburg behind the plate, rolls off to the right, and he goes over to retrieve it. No damage done. There are no base runners. Manager Casey Stengel, the New York Mets, electing to keep Craig Anderson, his relief hurler, in the ball game rather than go to the pinch hitter with the score tied in the top half of the eighth inning. Here's a swing and a ground ball to third. Jim Gilliam has it on a big hop. He fires on across to Ron Fairley in time to get Chacon. So Gilliam took the ground ball and threw on. And the New York Mets are out in order in the top of the eighth with no runs or no hits, no errors, and nobody left. And so at the end of seven and one half innings to play, the score is the New York Mets two, the Los Angeles Dodgers two. Coming up here in Los Angeles, California, we're going to the bottom half of the eighth inning, and the Dodgers will send up Jim Gilliam, Willie Davis, and Tommy Davis. They face Craig Anderson, who is working here in relief of Bob Miller, with the score tied 2-2. Gilliam, a switch hitter, batting left against the right-hander, Craig Anderson. Here's the first pitch inside. Had him skipping rope, and it's ball one. Gilliam tonight, grounded out, grounded out, and walked. Anderson in the wind-up, and the pitch comes high for a ball. It's 2-0 oh after Gilliam walked in the sixth inning and was sacrificed second. Tommy Davis hit a fly ball to center and Gilliam gambled that it would not be caught by Christopher and rounded third kept coming full steam. Christopher made the catch and so he easily doubled Gilliam at second base. Here's a pitch low for a ball. Three and oh the count now to Jim Gilliam. The Dodgers scored first tonight. On a home run by Frank Howard, a line shot into the stands right at the foul pole in left field. Here's the 3-0 pitch. Ball four, and he walked him on four pitch ball. That is the first walk given up by Craig Anderson, and left-hander Wilmer Vinegabin Mizell is throwing in the bullpen now for the New York Mets. Gil Hodges has come over from his position at first base to have a word with pitcher Craig Anderson, as Willie Davis is coming up now. That's number three in the batting order. Walk, grounded out to first base, and sacrifice. Willie Davis has a batting average of 336. Hodges is still talking to Craig Anderson. Hodges, of course, uh, as a longtime member of the Los Angeles Dodgers, has been a big help to Casey Stengel uh, during this series. And... Uh, being able to assist him in uh, the manner in which the defense is played. There's a the pitch inside as Davis pulls around to sacrifice. Took it high and tight as Greg Anderson fired it in there to find out whether or not he was going to sacrifice. It's ball one. Last night, Hodges, uh, although he was not in the ball game, was up on the steps of the dugout a couple of times, moving the defense of the New York Mets on various Dodger hitters. And tonight he's been over there talking to pitchers on various hitters. Here's the pitch, and again, Davis punts the ball. It's foul coming back. One ball and one strike.
Willie Davis trying to sacrifice Jim Gilliam to second base to get him into scoring position here in the bottom half of the eighth inning with the score tied 2-2. Not in time as Jim Gilliam gets back safely. <coughs> Felix Mantia at third base is in on the edge of the grass. Here's the pitch. He squares around to bunt, bunts it out in front of the plate, and Craig Anderson has it. He's going on to first base. Got him there just barely. Charlie Neal took the throw, and streaking down the first base line was Willie Davis, and they got him by just about a half step. Craig Anderson fielding the ball and firing it over to Charlie Neal, covering the bag at first. The sacrifice executed as Jim Gilliam moves to second. And Tommy Davis is coming up. Tommy Davis slides to right. Hickman made a great catch out there in the first inning, a sliding catch. Davis struck out in the third and slides to center in the sixth inning, as was when they doubled Gilliam at second. Tommy Davis, big right-hand batter. Greg Anderson into the stretch, and here's the pitch. Missing low and away for ball one. Dodgers scored first tonight on Frank Howard's home run, and then with Edio Chacon on base, Frank Thomas hit a home run to put the Mets out in front. That was in the third inning. And then in the bottom half of the seventh inning, the Dodgers scored the tying run unearned in the bottom of the seventh, and it's right now 2-2. Two -two. Here is the... Pitch from Craig Anderson, and it's low. For, uh, check it, it's in there for a call strike. It's 1-1. A call strike. One ball and one strike now to Tommy Davis. With Ron Fairley now on deck for the Los Angeles Dodgers. At second base, Jim Gilliam takes his lead. Greg Anderson has the sign from catcher Harry Cheedy. Here's a 1-1 pitch. It's low for ball. It's 2-1. Tommy Davis turning to look down to third to coach Leo DeRocher. And now Tommy Davis has asked umpire Shag Crawford behind the plate to take a look at the ball. And so Greg Anderson tosses it in to Crawford. He looks at it and he's going to throw this one out. Left-hander Wilmer Mizell still throwing in the bullpen for the New York Mets. As the Dodgers are batting in the bottom half of the eighth inning. The runner at second and one man out. A count of two balls and one strike to Tommy Davis at the plate. Here's the pitch. Swung on and fouled off. A little number started down the first baseline and then rolled off. Harry Chidi and... Umpire Shag Crawford trying to pick it up at the same time, and Crawford's throwing it out of play. Both had their hands on it, and uh, it was rolling around on the ground. Count is two balls and two strikes to Tommy Davis. Greg Anderson now has a new ball. He is rubbing it up, looking around the outfield. Playing Tommy Davis to pull. Gilliam leads. Here's a 2 2 pitch. Outside for ball three. It's a full count now to Tommy Davis at the plate. Davis with a batting average of 304. Davis boys, Willie and Tommy, are unrelated. Craig Anderson looking in for a sign. Into the stretch now. Here's a payoff pitch. In there for a call strike three. Caught him looking. Tommy Davis turns and walks out of there. He is called out on strike two away. And Jim Gilliam is holding at second base. Ron Fairley coming up now. He is one for three. And again, Gil Hodges is 
coming out to the mound. And Casey Single is coming out of the dugout, and he is on the way to the mound. Catcher Harry Cheedy is out there also. Ron Fairley, the next batter with two men out and a runner at second. Score tied 2-2. Strategy conference at the mound. A left-hander, Vinegar Ben Mizell, throwing in the bullpen. Ron Fairley is a left-hand batter. Hodges now turns, goes back to his position at first, yelling something out to Jim Hickman, the right fielder, as he does. Greg Anderson staying in the ball game. Casey Stingle turns, comes back toward the dugout. Cincinnati Reds 5, the Houston Colts 45 nothing. final score. Cincinnati shutting out Houston. And now the catcher's box is being outlined as they're going to put Fairley on with first base open. Jack Crawford outlines it with his foot, and they're intentionally walking Fairley. Frank Howard is due up next. Here is ball two. Catcher has to remain... Uh, Within the catching lines, of course, until the pitch actually is thrown. He can't just move out there and stay, as he once could. Three balls now and no strikes to Ron Fairley. Ball four. So Fairley has been intentionally walked. He goes down to first base. That is what the strategy conference was about. And now Frank Howard is coming up. Frank Howard had a line homer into the left field stand last night. He was two for four, and tonight he's two for three. He had an infield hit in the fourth inning. Went out to shortstop in the seventh. So they're going to pitch to big right-hand batter Frank Howard. Runners at first and second, and two men out in the score tied in the bottom of the eighth. Here's a line drive going on the left field for a base hit. Gilliam turns third, and he's coming home. Frank Thomas up with the ball, relays it in, and Gilliam crosses the plate. Runners holding at first and second now for the Dodgers. Frank Howard jumping on the first ball pitch and lining it. Out over the head of third baseman Felix Mantia and on out into left field. And the Dodgers go out in front here in the bottom half of the eighth inning. By a score of three to two. And it's the third hit of the night for Frank Howard. It's a run batted in. And catcher John Roseburg is coming up. Tim Harkness is coming in to run now. We're getting a pinch runner for Howard. Tim Harkness. Manager Walter Austin going to speed on the bases as he has inserted pinch runner Tim Harkness for Frank Howard. And left-hand batter John Roseburg is coming up. He is one for three tonight. Ron Fairley is the base runner at second. Dodgers out in front by a score of three to two in the bottom of the eighth. It's just in there for a call strike to Roseboro. <laughs> Felix Mantia at third base is playing even with the bag. Anderson is set to work. Here's a pitch for him as a line drive down the right field line. A foul ball going into the stands and out of play. And right now, in order to allow our stations to identify themselves, we pause now for station identification. The time, one... This is Lindsey Nelson with Bob Murphy and Ralph Kiner at Dodger Stadium in Los Angeles, California, where the Dodgers now lead the New York Mets by a score of 3-2, to two, with two men out, runners at first and second, and the count to John Roseburg at the plate, strike two. Here's the pitch high for a ball, it's one and two. Anderson takes a moment to rub up the ball. Well, the two ball games that have been played between these two teams thus far could not be much more closely competitive than they have been. The Mets hanging right in there with a red-hot Dodger team. Chacon uh, fakes 
The runner fairly back to the bag at second, no throw. Now goes back to his position at short. Here's the pitch. Swung in, it's a ground ball going through in the right field for a base hit. Fairly turns at third, he's coming out home. And the throw instead goes to second. One run in, runners at first and third. Roseboro with a ground single between Hodges and Neal on out into right field. It scored fairly from second. Tim Harkness continuing on around to third. So it is now four to two of the Dodgers are leading. Runners at first and third, two men out, and Larry Burright is coming up. He's been up three times tonight without a hit. That was the second hit of the night for John Roseborough. So Frank Howard had three hits. John Roseborough has had two for the Dodgers tonight. Now time has been called as Gil Hodges goes halfway over toward the mound to yell something over to pitcher Craig Anderson. Anderson also relaying a word over to Felix Mantia, who touches the bag at third, an appeal play, just on the possibility that Ron Fairley might have missed the bag coming around. The ball is tossed over to Mantia, who tagged the bag on an appeal play, and the umpire at third, Al Barlick, says safe. So now back to the business of Larry Burright at the plate. Checks it and takes it outside for ball one. In case you want to look ahead to the top of the ninth, the Mets are scheduled to send up Joe Christopher, Frank Thomas, and Gil Hodges. The Dodgers now leading by a score of four to two and runners at first and third. Here's the pitch. Bunny down at third baseline. Felix Mantia there has it fires to the plate. He's out at the plate. He's out at the plate. As they try a two-out squeeze, the throw goes from Mantia into Harry Chidi, who had the ball on Harkness at the plate. And so the side is retired. That was the only play Mantia had. He never would have had a play on Burright at first base. And so in the bottom half of the eighth inning, the Los Angeles Dodgers got two runs on two hits. There were no met errors and two men left on base. So at the end of eight full innings of play in Los Angeles, California, the score is the Dodgers four and the Mets two. Tim Harkness is staying in the ball game, and he is playing first base. And Ron Fairley is going to right field. The very same moves made last night by manager Walter Austin. So Tim Harkness at first base. Ron Fairley in right field as Frank Howard was taken out for the pinch runner. If you'd like to purchase tickets for future Met games, and they are exciting baseball games, believe me, you can do that at a number of convenient locations. There's a ticket office open at the Polo Ground seven days a week, a ticket office at Grand Central Station, another at Pennsylvania Station. You can make ticket reservations at any Howard Close store or order your tickets by mail addressing your request to Ticket Manager, Polo Grounds, New York, 39, New York. Box seats 350 each. Reserve seats 250 each and close 25 cents additionally for postage and handling. Now Richie Ashburn is being set up to bat for Joe Christopher. Richie Ashburn. Richie Ashburn, left hand batter, waits for the first pitch from Larry Sherry and it's in there for a call strike one. Christopher, nothing for three tonight, and of course, manager Casey Stengel sending up Richie Ashburn with the hope that Richie can get on base because he has a great pro proclivity for just that. Here's a pitch taken in there for a call strike two. Richie Ashman is four hits, four walks, and 12 pinch hitting assignments. And trailing by two runs, what manager single wants most of all now is a base runner with Frank Thomas coming up to be followed by Gil Hodges. Top half of the ninth inning. Here's a two-strike pitch coming in high for a ball. It's one and two to Richie Ashburn. Frank Thomas kneeling there in the on-deck circle for the Mets. That pitch is inside, turned him out of there, and it's 2-2. Two -two. Top half of the ninth, that's once again, the Dodgers and the Mets are battling right down to the wire. Here's a 2-2 two -two pitch. 
foul back onto the screen, and Ashburn stays alive, getting a little piece of it. So the count is still two and two as Larry Sherry is massaging the baseball. Two two pitches low for ball three. Ashburn turned out of the batter's box. Count has gone full to him now. Larry Sherry up on the rubber, looking in time call because Ashman hasn't come back in the batter's box yet. Larry Sherry up on the rubber, looking in time call because Ashman hasn't come back in the batter's box yet. Now he's in, and this will be a payoff pitch and a big one from Larry Sherry. Here it is, swung on, fouled off. Into the second deck, down behind third base. So the count holds it three and two to Richie Ashburn. Ashburn standing just outside the batter's box. Now he comes back in. Sherry pumps and pitches. Swing and a foul ball coming back. Out holds that three and two on Ashburn. He tries to guard that plate. Hoping to get on base. And the ball put in play. Umpire Shag Crawford now coming out around behind the plate. And Richie Ashman steps back into the batter's box. Here's 3-2 pitch. Swung on and fouled off. Again, end of the second deck, back a third. Sliced off there by left-hand batter Richie Ashburn. Trying to get a piece of anything that comes over that plate and hoping for the ball four with a 3-2 count. Sherry taking his time getting a sign here. John Roseburg, here's the pitch. Let up, and it's high ball four. He walked in. So Ashburn goes down to first base for the base on ball. Frank Thomas is coming up. Situation tying run at the plate. Thomas had a two-run homer in the top half of the third inning. His 12th home run of the season. He trailed only Orlando Cepeda and Willie Mays in the matter of home runs. They have 13 each, and Thomas has 12. Moves up there into that familiar stance, right over the plate. Ashman leads it first. Here's the pitch. It's in there for a call strike one to Frank Thomas. Gil Hodges moving into the on-deck circle for the New York Mets. But nobody out in the top half of the ninth inning. Pitch. Swung on. He tried to check it, and Jack Crawford said he got it all the way around. Took a little rip and then tried to hold it up. Jack Crawford says strike two to Frank Thomas. Takes a moment before he comes back into the batter's box. Now Ashburn leads it first. Here's a pitch to Thomas. Here's a ground ball pull foul between Sally Hemus on the coaching line and the bag at third. Ashburn off and running with the swing of the bat comes back to the bag at first now. And Thomas uh, wants another bat. He goes over. Asks the bad boy to bring him one out. Now tries both of them. And is walking back up toward the plate. Two strike count on Thomas. All right, he's ready to go once again. Harry Sherry into the stretch position. Here's the pitch. Swung on, it's a little number back to Sherry. He's going to second base. He's out there. The relay to first uh, is not in time as he doesn't cut it loose, as a matter of fact. Burright started to throw, came through, but held on to the ball. And so on at first is Frank Thomas having forced Richie Ashburn at second base. And Rod Keneal is coming out to run for Frank Thomas. Gil Hodges coming up. 
Rod Keneal now running for Frank Thomas with one man out. That play went one to four. Ron Peronoski is now throwing in the bullpen for the Los Angeles Dodgers. So with one man out, Keneal is the base runner at first, running for Frank Thomas. And Gil Hodges is up. He is one for three tonight. For New York, running for Thomas, number 10, Ron Keneal. There is the announcement of pinch runner Rod Keneal. Hodges is hitting an even 300 with five home runs to his credit this season. 366 career home runs. Pitch comes low for ball one to Hodges. Now Ed Boucher is swinging a bat in the on-deck circle. Ed Boucher is swinging a bat in the on-deck circle for the New York Mets. Situation tying run at the plate. Pitch is in there for a call strike. Change of speed. One ball and one strike to Hodges. Hodges had 361 home runs as a Dodger. Waits for the pitch. Swung on and fouled off. Out of play. One ball, two strikes. Larry Sherry rubbing up the ball, looking around, straightens up his uniform, resets the cap. Now looks in to get a sign from catcher John Roseborough. Into the stretch. Keneal leads it first. Here's the pitch to Hodges. Swung on and has a ground ball to third. Gilliam has it. Plays to Burright. Out of second. Throw to first. In time. A game-ending double play. As Hodges has hit into a double play from Gilliam to Burright to Harkness from third to second to first. And so in the top half of the ninth inning the New York Mets are out with no run on no hit no errors and nobody left. We'll be back in a moment with the final summary and totals but right now the final score of the ball game: the Los Angeles Dodgers four and the New York Mets two. Once again here at Dodger Stadium in Los Angeles, the New York Mets have battled the Los Angeles Dodgers all the way, but the Dodgers have won it by a score of 4-2, to two. and to tell you something of how they did it, here's Ralph Kiner. Well, it was almost an identical game with last night's game in which Don Drysdale won 3-1. to one. The two pitchers had a duel all the way down the line through seven innings, just as they did last night. Neither got credit for the victory, as Wally Moon saved Padres with a pinch single and Anderson saved Miller. In the eighth inning, just as they did last night, the Los Angeles Dodgers went out in front to stay. It was tied up 2-2 going into the eighth. Jim Gilliam, who last night led off with a single and won the ball game as he scored the tie-breaking one, this time led off with a walk. Then he was sacrificed to second base. And after Tommy Davis had struck out, Ron Fairley was walked intentionally to get at Frank Howard. But Frank Howard, who had three hits tonight, spoiled the strategy by singling the drive in Gilliam with a tie-breaking run. Roseboro then followed with a single to make it 4-2, to two, and that's the way the ball game ended up. Actually, the New York Mets, after the single by Gil Hodges, which followed Frank Thomas's home run that gave the Mets the two runs, were retired 18 times in a row. There was not a man left on base from that moment on. Last night, the New York Mets left two men on in the whole ball game. Tonight, they left three on. Frank Thomas had his 13th base hit in 13 consecutive ball games, actually at least 13, as he hit a home run with a man on base. So now Thomas with 12 home runs trail, trails Willie Mays and also Orlando Sapita in the home run department by one. It was a fine ball game. The Dodgers four runs on seven hits. They made one error and left seven on. The Mets had two runs on four hits. They made one error and they left three on base. The Mets now in both these ball games coming up with four hits in each game. The winning pitcher was Larry Sherry in relief of Johnny Padres. His win record now, two wins and one loss. The losing pitcher was Craig Anderson. He has won three and lost two. Well, that wraps up another New York Mets game. Sure hope you'd enjoyed it. <laughs>